Okay, so what we need to do today is this area here, when you're looking at your photographic reference, which is here, you will see it's very dark in here and very dark there because we need to, sh to show that the, the cliff edge goes down into the sea. So we need to add some darker teal colour there and there. So if you look at m mine, it's not dark enough. We need to get some more. Can you see how it, you don't have the depth going on in there? So I'm going to mix up. So usually when I come back to a painting, what I try and do is before I get started, I obviously you just want to look to see where you need to develop your areas a bit further. Okay, so I'm going to do some darker tones down in there. So it just gives us a really nice white. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more watercolour, but you could later on, hopefully, when we do some catching up, you could do some big sweeps with pastels if you like, if you fancy doing that. I'll do a little bit. But this is the first step that I'm going to do. So I'm going to mix up, just like last time, it's that dark sea colour that we've got. So I've got some Prussian blue, I've got some windy blue green shade, and I get a really bright, scary turquoise colour. So we immediately know that we need to dull this down. Because look, I've got this real, really, really bright blue. Look how bright that is. Okay. If I put that on straight away, it's going to shout off the page and jump up in the air um, visually, visually. So we need to knock it down. Okay. So by adding, so you can think, well, you've got the, the purpley tones of the uh, cliffs. So we could start by adding the purple tone to it, a little bit on the edge whenever I'm mixing colours. So now that I've mixed the purple to it, it looks like ultramarine blue, okay? So I need to add another colour to it to, to dull it down, okay? So I'm probably gonna go, what am I gonna go for? I'm gonna go for an earth tone to dull it down. So if you get like, um, I'm gonna pick up a brown. Probably a cool brown if you've got one. It's going to go a bit greyish. So it's going sort of greyish of colour at the moment. And then because I, my teal colour was um, a turquoisey blue, because we want to have it that sort of sea colour, I'm adding a little bit of uh, Windsor Green to it, or like a jade colour. So it gives me a dark colour but it's now looking like a dark dull teal colour. So how you all managed to mix that? So it was a turquoise colour with some green and then I've added some brown to it and also because I need a yellow I need a yellow to it as well. But if you've got a turquoise green colour already if you add a bit of brown to it or a bit of grey to it it's just to knock the brightness down is all you need. I thought it'd be easier for you if I. And obviously, it's up to you how bright you want um, want to have it. Okay, and I'm not pre-wetting the surface. I'm going to go straight in on dry. I'm just going to put in a few squiggles like that, and you can dab it. This done, and I'm just going to do a few flips, and then. We need lots more, but I'm trying to do a broken, um, just like before, a, a broken flat crisscross shape. So it looks broken rather than it being solid. And it's all solid in there. And I think some of this might be masking fluid. I might need to get off in a minute. So I'm just, I'm trying to make it a bit broken. So we're getting it to come in here. Okay. And then you can just dab it with your finger. So now, now we've got the weight that we need on the rocks. Can you see how much darker that is now? So don't be afraid to dab with your finger, okay? Because we don't put, you know, it's meant to be more freer. Don't be afraid to dab, just to blot it slightly so you get the weight of it, okay? And then I'm going to dilute that same colour down. That was quite strong. 
And because I want to suggest um, a few flicks of it coming through, I'm just going to do a few, and I'm holding my brush on its angle, I'm just going to do a few sweeps, sweeps here. I'm going to break that line up. That's too solid. So if you're finding your, that's better, just breaking that up a bit. I didn't want it to be too solid. So what I'm trying hard to do is not to have a perfectly um, smooth looking C. We want, um, I, I want it to look a bit Patching when it's coming in. All right. Like that bit there. Let's just leave that out. That's it. And just dab that. There we go. And we might, I might do a bit more with um, pastels anyway. I think. I might do a bit at the back actually. So I'm now going to grab. So I think we'll probably get a, a few, another little cooler. It's up to you. It's, in, it's a really artistic license. I just um, feel I'm probably just going to put on the horizon just another little streak up here. It's just because I fancy doing it. And because cobalt blue, blue on its own is quite sort of um, bright or pure, I'm going to just contaminate it with a little bit of that turquoise just so it sort of looks greyish blue. Okay, and I think it might look quite nice having another little streak in there. Yeah, I just fancy doing some, some streaks across here. As I say, it's entirely up to you. You don't have to do it. But I want notice that because I want to try and get some texture on this C, I'm I'm doing it on the side. I'm dragging it on my brush. I'm holding it vertical against the, the page, and then I'm scraping across. All right. There we go. Nice bit of texture. Now we're going to come. So while that's settling. We've got the sky to think about what whether we want it to be a um, what colours we want to put into that. But um, in the meantime, we'll do that. Uh, yeah, I suppose we could do that now. So it's entirely up to you what sort of day you want it to be, because it's essentially a fairly sort of overcast day, isn't it, unfortunately. So I think you probably want to make it sort of a soft um, turquoise day, perhaps. So I'm not thinking of a bright auction rain. I'm sort of thinking we could do, we could do start off with a colour like cerulean or something. Then you've got several options. We know that um, watercolour always dries lighter. And now is the time for you to think, do I, do I or do I not want clouds? Okay, and that's another option. And because I want to suggest mine's a bit of a dull day, I've added a little bit of sepia to my cerulean just to kill the brightness of it a bit. Okay, so it's still fairly, well, it's still fairly weak. And I'm just at the moment just adding loads of water but because it's the sky. I'm going to need loads. So I want you to get a really nice big brush. The biggest brush that you normally you would use to do your, um, would normally to use a one that soaks up, soaks up a lot of water. Okay. So here's one that I've got here. It's quite a big one. All right, we start at the top and go down. The colour's stronger at the top, okay. 
and you want to have a nice big pool. You'll be my, my um, the colour will go into shot in a minute. So I've graduated my sky. So as I've gone down, I've done loads of swipes left to right. As long as you keep it a light touch and do lots of sweeping, it'll go down for you. Okay. You will get, uh, I've, I've got gentle streaks in my uh, sky, but um, it's up to you whether you want them or not. It's not, it's very, it's hardly anything at all. I think the way it's settling. So it's just, it's giving it just a haze. I faded out to practically water against the horizon. If you wanted to, you could, I suppose, go very sort of artistic license. If you wanted to give it a slight haze, then you would pick up a color like um, a very pale yellow. And then you would just sweep it in so there's a very, I've just put, I've got very pale yellow on this um, paintbrush and it's given me a very faint haze of yellow. And then I need to stop in a minute because I'm going to get too many streaks. So it, I, because it's a, because it's a cool day, I've, I've not done my sky particularly strong. If you find after your work has dried that it's that you feel that the sky is too light, then just let it get bone dry and then you can repeat the process. Okay, it's better for it to be uh, too light and ready for you to do again than you find that it's too dark. Okay, when you immediately do a sky, this is also the opportunity for you. If you did, I haven't attempted to put any clouds in the sky. But if you remember, I've described to you in previous art classes, that if you do want to put clouds in, I usually screw up, screw up and stretch some um, kitchen paper. And then I press it down on the surface and immediately lift off. Um, and, that, and that's a way that you can get clouds. But if you keep dabbing it or keep blotting with your... Um, uh, tissue you won't you'll get indistinct clouds you won't get the, the white clouds that you're after that's an effect that you want it to right so just let that settle and just ignore it the best thing if you're not quite happy with the blending the best thing is to let it get bone dry and then you just repeat the process if you're not happy with that all right so now that we've done that we're going to move down to this area here okay I'm going to let that dry a little bit more before I start rubbing any of these marks off as well, because I've got some marks off down here. So I'm going to work on these these um, uh, rock or stones. And again, this technique, so I'm going to go down to a fairly small brush. And it's up to you as to what colours you want to incorporate. On the photographic reference that we've got, we've sort of got lots of greyish tones perhaps a little bit of sandy sort of colors it's really up to us and then obviously we've got the earth here which is looking sort of a pinky browny sort of color all right so i'm going to be doing that in my painting now this bit over here okay right. so i'm going to pick up some yellow ochre which is a nice sandy color so you could have ochre or raw sienna, any of these sort of sandy earth tones. We've also got some, uh, what's that one? Raw umber. So these are, these are my earth tones that I've got there. All right. And then I've picked up the sepia color that we had, that we used for the sea, and I've scooped it and put it on the side and it's gone sort of a sap green or a dull greenish colour, right? Because I've added it to, I'm just dragging it on the sides. What I'm trying to do is try and get a range of dirty colours, really. I'm probably even going to pick up some, I don't have burnt sienna, so I'm probably just going to 
pick up a little bit of red. I've got, um, I don't know, I do actually have some burnt sienna. So I've just got a range of earth tones. So I've got a sort of got a, a burnt sienna, a raw, raw rumba, yellow ochre, those sort of colours. Okay. And you can just start painting in. So as with all watercolours, I'm just going to go with a lighter colour first. And I'm just going to blanket wash that in. Any old sort of wiggly ways. Um, yeah, look, it's looking a little bit olive, but you can start to put in some because we've got a dark crease there put that in there and we've got other creases we've got a line there and a line there haven't we? and another line here so while this is still wet you can start to block in some of the dark areas we've got yeah this is this is needs lifting because there's a light edge there and there so if you if you put it on and then i'm sort of just doing x's really because we want to get this sort of all bubbly and then that one on the top looks more purpley purpley grayish color so if you've got your earth tone and just add some purple to it, even some grey to it, then it sort of cools it back. And if you just, this is very dry, my brush. I've got a greyish colour on it. And I want to flick some texture onto this area here, this stone. So I'm going to hold my brush flat-ish, or flat as I can. And then flick, flick it across. In fact, I need to dry it out a bit more. That's better, look. And you get a nice broken. Right. So if you get your brush and just flick it sideways and hold it flat, you might just get the odd random sort of flick. So drag, you want to try and drag it. So it's a really, really dry brush. Look, just by dragging it. Because I've got a textured surface. So if you've got a smooth surface, you're going to find this more difficult. And I can drag this here, look. I'm randomly getting these textures because I'm holding my brush really quite flat. Okay. And I'm just dragging it. Scraping. I'm scraping the surface with a brush. Scraping it on. Very dry. Very, very dry. And now I'm beginning to get some nice texture here. And now I can make this darker. So it's just pure paint, not wetting the surface in advance. Just want to get a really dark color. So I'm just picking up the sepia or brown color. So you want it really dark, so you want it black but not black, so much thicker consistency so we can really start to define that dark crease. And I'll probably need to go down, my brush is probably a little bit thick really. I'll change it in a minute and then I'll, if I blot it, I can just slip in that. There we go. And we want another dark edge there and a dark edge there. And then we've got some bubbly bits here, don't know. So it just really go as dark as you want, really. But the main thing is, if you hold your, as I say, keep holding your brush really dry and then flick it and then you start to get these really nice textures that you're after. You can start to suggest where you want them to be. Nice chunky rocks
Right, there's loads of um, textures down here. So I'm just gonna, look, I'm, I'm just gonna make it up. There's lots of lights and dark. I'm not going to attempt to paint each individual little um, stone. I'm going to suggest it. So I suppose if this is where you could go in with your ink pen if you wanted to. So I'm just gonna do some lines. So I'm, I'm playing, what am I playing? I'm playing noughts and crosses, but I'm, I'm doing noughts and crosses in the direction of the rock. So you'll notice that my noughts and crosses are um, at an angle, not straight up and down. And then every now and then I'm doing a bit of a wiggly around it. Okay. to give it a texture. And obviously you could take your time, but I'm, I'm just doing some rough wiggles. All right. So you get a nice sort of texture effect. And when I've got this brush on, I can do a few more. Fine. So it's just painting straight on, just so we're getting all these nice creases and things going on. So I noticed on my, well in the picture it's fairly straight, but I've got a, almost like a constant diagonal line going all the way down my picture. Okay, um, And in this area here, you'll see I've marked in pencil. And I'm actually going to put a green bush in there and I'm going to do it around here and I'm going to try and break up this line. I don't want it to be too, too even. I want it to be a bit more uneven. Okay. And then, um, so my next step now is to start to mix up some green. So I'm going to let that settle. Um, and so I'm now going to mix up some green, which is going to go over parts of this area here, All right? So I'm starting off with that green. And I'm adding it to the burnt sienna, raw sienna, ochre colours that are already on my plate so that it's making it go dirty. So now I have a dirty, yucky colour. Okay. So if we look at our reference photo, we've got some really dark tones here in extreme lights and extreme darks. Okay. So if you look at my painting, I've got the light, but I don't have the dark. Okay. So my aim is to do See where it's dark here and then light there. I need to do more of this. So I, and I'm going to do it in a random way. So it does, you don't have to copy my painting. You can look at your painting and think, oh, I want to try and think of that pom-pom shape or those um, spongy type shapes. And I want some areas I want to be light and some areas I want to be dark. Okay. So I have that sap green. And I'm looking at the colour and I need to go darker. So I'm now picking up a cold green shed to it. And because it's got that dirty yellow in it, it's sort of knocked it back. But I'm probably going to add um, some glue to it and perhaps even a little bit of brown to it or red. You want to get it looking like a really sort of dark green. I mean, if you have purely and green, you could use that. I don't think many of you've got that colour. So I'm trying to go for a Christmas, a Christmas tree green, but we don't want it to be too bright. We want it to, you know, you want to soften that colour a bit. So if you remember, if you add a red to a green, it goes greyish colour. Okay, so it's one of, one of these scenarios where we are going to. Um, we don't want the colour to be too pure. We want to, we want to knock it down a bit. 
So that's all I'm doing at the moment. I'm just beginning to, to mix up a dark green that's a little bit soft as well. So the colour that I've got is looking like um, a dark foresty green. So it's I'm trying to put it on here so you can see it. Okay. So I'm going to start off where I know I want it to be dark. I'm going to work in patches. I want you to have some um, tissue paper handy or kitchen paper handy in case you need to do some blotting to soften the edges. Might just be armed. You may not use it, I don't know, but we'll see. Okay. So I'm going to load my colour, make sure it's not too strong. And I'm going to start off where I know I want it to be dark. So I'm going to start off with here and I'm just going to load up my brush. Okay, you could even do a little bit of this. And I know I want it to be dark here. In fact, I think possibly my colour's not dark enough. Now, when you've got a hard edge like this, I've washed out my brush and I'm just going to wiggle the edge a bit. So can you see I've softened that, but now I've got, so I've got dark up here and I've got my light patch preserved and now I've got the darkness again. I can dab into this and I can dab into this. Okay. So we're trying to get random patches. And now I'm gonna try and blend out again. So I'm wiping with a clean brush, okay, I'm wiping out here. So I'm getting these patches, okay, there we go. and then we're going to have another dark one. That's going to be light there, I reckon. So it's more important now for you to look at this, this, than this okay we can't possibly try and copy that it's giving us an idea but it's more important that we look at this because this is what we're going to concentrate be looking at okay i've got some nice light patches here so i might keep some of those the main thing i want you to look at is to say right where do i want a dark patch i definitely want a dark patch to be there probably i want a dark patch to be there but the main thing is to soften these harsh blobs that you get so if I wash out my brush and I just tickle the edge and tickle the edge. You see it's looking more natural. All right. You can always dump it back. Don't be afraid to, you could tap with your finger as well. Or reload a little bit more if you want to emphasize it. Because we're just trying to make sure that it looks really, really broken. So I'm just, I'm just tapping. As you can probably see on the camera. I'm just trying to break it up. Okay. Um, oh yeah, I'm going to put some patches over here. Okay. You could even if you wanted to. Um, I know, um, I think Linda last week was saying, are we going to put the big yellow flowers in? Well, probably I probably won't because I've gone too far down, but we could start to yellow things up a little bit. Now that's too harsh, so what do I do? I'll just scribble it out. Just scribble it around. There we are. But I've just made giving it a little bit of giving it a little bit busier. So there's there's ways there's ways around it that you can do it. This just makes it look a little bit prettier. That's what you want. Now I'm just gonna dab on some colours. Dab on a bit there, I think. Yeah, I think we've got a bit there. As I say, don't don't look at the photograph. Look at your work. Your painting is far more important than that photograph. Okay. 
right so i'm gonna soften this that looks like a bit of a big blob of sepia by mistake so guess what i'll just block that and get rid of it yeah nice bit of texture drag it with my finger i think so i'm wiggling it all over the shop just so i'm getting some nice textures don't really like that so guess what i'll just soften that so it's to it's the way i want it so now i'm getting a real rough undergrowth look which is more what my goal was that's what i wanted i wanted a, a rough undergrowth look about it okay and i'm trying to bring this a little bit down a little bit bluer especially down here just tapping around yeah, it's just Need some more white down here. Yeah. Yeah, I need another one here. There's all sorts of ways. I'm I'm now dotting and sort of flicking with my brush a little bit. So I'm trying to Get some nice textures. Oh, well, that looks quite nice. See, famous words by what's it? Um, Bob Ross, happy accidents. So I'm now tapping with this brush, which has got a dark green on it. And it's given me this really pretty texture, which I like. So I'm going with that and I'm trying to rotate it around in all sorts of, in all sorts of directions. It's really quite dry. Okay, so I've got the texture that I want. So now this is dry, I'm now going to rub this off and see how much of it I lose and how much of it I get. So I ought to get off. Oh look, see, I've probably lost too much here. Look. I wanted to make it look like it was a choppy sea. I'm just dragging across with my rubber, so excuse the shaking. So I'm now going to do a little bit of a wash down here. I'm, I could probably pull it down a little bit further, but um, I think what I will do is do, I'm going to do a wash over this so this is where i've done the texture for the stone so this is texture here and i've got nothing in this area here so we need to, need to soften that back okay so i'm going to pick up my good old burnt sienna and i'm going to have it quite watered down it's a nice earth tone it's quite pink but because i've got a dirty plate it's it's already got been knocked down So that's my burnt sienna, but it looks a little, it's almost looking like um, raw rumber actually. I might get my pen out. 
because I've lost the edge of my cliff here. So I'm just going to scribble in a bit more. one like that doesn't it and then there's that going like that yeah and it sort of goes around like that doesn't it so I'm just to pick this up oh we've got a bit more detail to put up here as well haven't we So I'm, I've got this quite looking choppy, but this bit here is a little bit too much. So if I just pick up my um, brush and just pick up a sort of sea greenish sort of colour, and then I can just um, get rid of a few because I want that to be much darker in there. Right, so now the next stage, if we want to, I have to just soften it up a bit. There we go. That's made it look a bit more choppy. So I'm going to do a tiny little bit here, but then I'm not, I'm not going to, I think that's probably it. What I'm going to do instead is see whether there are areas that we want to um, touch up with some pastel, chalk pastel or watercolour pencils. Or if you think you, you're happy with it as it is, you can just do it as, you, as it is. But the, um, the idea was to combine a little bit of both. So... Um, What I am doing now is just to uh, trying to define the odd area with a little bit of stronger um, definition. So I've practically got sepia colour on my um, on my brush, which is, as you can see, is quite is quite small. Just trying to represent very roughly um, So this bit needs to be darker. So what I'm going to do is just to show you chalk pastels now. The chalk pastels are really good because I know I'm beginning, beginning to do quite a lot of texture here with my um, watercolour brush. So if you want to, ever you want to practice this at home, what they say, and you can use this technique with any sort of form of, of working. If you just practice rolling around or rolling in all directions, you can get these really lovely textures, as I say, watercolours or with acrylics as well, which we've been moving on to. So here I've got a small selection of these pastels. Okay, these are the pastels that I've got. Okay, and there's my little set that I've got of pastels. So there's all sorts of things that you can, as I say, try out with your pastels. And I, because I've got a little test here, I can just drag, up, drag out of the shot and just see whether things work or the way I want to. Okay, so I've got a nice soft limey colour here. And if I wanted to, I can just have a go at just scraping a bit more texture across here. Or I can even use it up here. Hang on. I'll just show you.
So let's get a mustard color. Okay, and we can just have a look. Bringing in a few marks. And because we've got a really nice sort of um, textured surface being watercolour, we've got a nice key for our pastels to go on. I can also use it to mark in some dark edges. So we've got some dark edges here on the cliffs. And if I hold it on, a, on its sharp edge, I can just drag it down. I suppose it's a way of just another way of, 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 of emphasizing dark edges that you've got the way you want to go. In fact, we can just do a few flicks around here. If you don't like it, that's oh, going a bit too brown. You can just wipe it off with a damp cloth. So that's too brown, I don't like that. I think I'd rather go blue or purple with that. The black there, I think. So where we've got all these creases going in, we can just bring that in. I'm just smudging around really just to get some more some more tones in. Just to give it some more atmosphere, I suppose. I don't think we need to do much more really. This probably needs a bit more. I think we're nearly there. You could do, as I say, you don't have to do pastels. You could do um, with watercolour pencils if you wanted to. Just lost my X's and my knots and crosses, so I'm going to need to put those back in.
Oh, yes. What I'm doing is I'm trying to do flat zigzags to bring some colour forward down into here, this area here. I might do a bit of grey. I think a lot probably depends on what colours you've got because I'm beginning to get a bit heavy here. So I'm going to get a clean cloth and wipe that out. Oh yeah, that's better. Right. Right, let's see if I can get a nice blue. So I'm looking for, if you've got any nice cobalt blue colour in the castle, that's what I'm looking for. I'm trying to sort of try and think about bringing in lots of colours, although this colour looks a little bit dark. I think it, at the end of the day it just depends on what, what you've got. So what I might try and do to lift this slightly is um, See if I can put a little bit of um, white over the top, blend it. This is all I'm doing, just a little bit. You don't have to. I mean, I, I, I was doing it more because we talked about doing it as a combination. Yeah, some nice, nice colours in there. I think that's probably about it really. Entirely to you how much more you want to work into the surface. Um, you can keep going, but as I say, you normally with these pastels you can just drag them up and pull them over the surface to bring out the occasional sort of bit of highlight that you want in the way that you want to. Um, and if you can you can wet it with water. So if you decide you want to soften something that you've just done. Um, if you just literally just drag over the top, okay, you've then just softened it, okay. But you, you do need to bear in mind now that because we're putting pastel over the top watercolour, especially here, um, and I dragged up down, I have lost my white edges coming up here that we that I masked out, but we we discovered or realised that they were looking. Um, uh, too much, won't they? So that's why I've I've knocked it all all down. So that's it. There it is. There's the finished picture at the moment.